Hi, welcome to Truth with Talon Isaac, episode number 117 coming at you tonight. By the way, I'm Tal. I'm Isaac. Uh, big show tonight. Lions, Travis Scott, college football madness. Big, big show. Okay. Okay, off the top. Do you want to talk about the Red Wings just a wee bit? Sure you can a little. Okay, so we went to a game uh, last week. Uh, they've been good. Good mix of youngsters, a few vets. Patty Kane It's a really nice addition. Yeah, yeah, he's very good. They're fun. Yeah. Like, listen, there's another team in Detroit. Why are you saying that like it's surprising? Patrick well, Kane's the man. We knew this. No, when he put Detroit on his short list, I became the big, the biggest Patty Kane fan ever. Right, but here's the thing. The Wings have been so bad for seven or eight years that they've lost a lot of the fans. I think those fans are starting to kind of go back and say, wow, these guys are good. I don't think they lost any fans, and I will say that because ticket prices for hockey, even when they were bad, are still very expensive. There's so much corporate ownership to season tickets it's funny how they're still keeping them yeah so i think fans are still there but detroit is hockey town and and we felt that when we were there on whatever day we went wednesday thursday thursday okay the 700 million dollar man i don't know if you had that and you're off the top but oh my gosh like crazy contract but this is shohei otani superstar baseball player right you have to yeah shohei otani the uh, biggest contract uh, in history of the four major sports totally worth it like the Lions, sorry, the Tigers are so far away from that, they weren't even in the discussion. But give the Jays some props for being in the discussion. Yeah, I don't think they were actually in the discussion. I think they just floated some rumors out there, but that's fine. Uh, Sucks to see him with the Dodgers, but I'll still be watching him, and it'll be good to see him in the playoffs. For sure. And that's the thing, right? We, like, I watch a lot of October baseball. I don't watch a ton other than the Tigers during the regular season. Now we'll be able to watch him in the playoffs. Yeah, I'll still be. I'm still a big Otani guy. Won't see him pitch this year. Next year he'll be pitching. Uh, but yeah, good for Otani. Yep, and he might play Elfield later in the year. Yeah, I bet he will. I bet he will. That's cool. Um, thanks, Dorn, for coming on the show last week. Did a good job. Third base, baby fart. Good content. Yeah, Dorn was great. Excellent work, Dorn. Okay, NBA. Let's chat a little bit with the NBA before we get into our three main topics. So the in season tournament, I didn't think was very good. Most people didn't. You didn't. See. Okay, that's no, a stupid. No, sorry, prior to it happening, okay. I didn't think it was going to be good, but it was great. Uh, yeah, I kind of pretty quickly got, once they got to the knockout stage, I was just fully invested, all in in the in season tournament, uh, just as more basketball. I, I didn't write anything about the in season tournament because they're just games to me. They're nothing like it's just games with funny courts. Uh, it's still basketball, so I didn't write any. Oh, the Lakers. Won, I, I don't really care about who won the in season tournament. It's just it's fun it's fun more basketball good games and people cared in november and december people being players yeah yes a lot players. Of players just they mail it in until yeah i didn't write about March like i have April. some points on actual basketball stuff okay well why don't we talk about some ask- okay. actual basketball the players. timberwolves are first in the western conference they continue to excel this is what they're supposed to do last season now they're doing it uh they've got a team to rival denver they've got the bodies to rival denver will be interesting to see how they hold up in the playoffs anything on the timberwolves you haven't watched them at all because they're they don't play at 7 30 or no, 7 i haven't watched much of them but i remember about seven years ago i think Jokic was a rookie carl anthony towns and Jokic went at each other a couple games and were like wow this is going to be good for a long time and cat doesn't have the same skill fire of Jokic, but it's going to be interesting to see them play especially Jokic against the french dude uh, yeah, but I think you're referencing, it was one game, I think it might have been game 83 a few years ago. It was, probably, a, it was a playing game. It was probably, or, no, yeah, it was not a playing game, but... Uh, game 83, I think it was called, which yep. was an extra game to determine seeding. This was maybe six years ago. Yep. Uh, go back and watch that. That was really cool. Uh, Dream on Green stuff. Very briefly, it's disgusting. It's this terrible. is going to be it's his terrible. legacy. I was just fully done with him after he broke Sabonis' ribs, after he stomped on his rib cage. That's when I sold all my Dream on Green stock. I didn't have a ton. Uh, but all time low now. Just drain like it sucks to see. It sucks to see the Warriors go out like this. The last couple of years, there's been discussion. Okay, who's the second best Warrior? Right? Is it Wiggins? Is it Green? Is it Clay? Now it doesn't matter because nobody else is even in the discussion. Yeah, the Warriors are unfortunately. It's very sad to see as a big Curry guy and as a fan Wiggins of is this, getting benched, right? Everyone's getting benched. Yeah, Wiggins, Looney, and Clay have all been. In and out of the rotation, bench at various points throughout games. It's it's really sucky to see Steph. It is blow. too bad, just because Steph is really one of the most entertaining basketball players in history. One of the best basketball players in history. Now he's playing with a bunch of poop heads. But in terms of leadership, captain, teammate, Steph is like top three in all of those. Especially when you look at basketball guys, which is not known for having a lot of really good captains and leaders. Yep. Uh, to lead dynasties. Uh, like usually good captains and leaders just bounce ship and make new teams every deadline. <laughs> LeBron. 
Uh, so Curry, my guy, sucks to see. We'll talk about the Thunder very briefly. Again, okay. you've not watched any of the Thunder because they don't I've play I've watched a little seven. bit of Thunder. No, I've watched some Thunder. Uh, Shea hit a big game winner last night. There you go. Casual. Uh, the Thunder are awesome. Watch some of the Thunder. Like, I'm really in on them. Uh, last year is when I invested heavily on them. Uh, and, and Chet has just made, like, he had nine blocks the other night. So is now the time for the Thunder to start catching in some of those chips and say, okay, let's trade for a guy? Maybe, like, the West, I would say, is relatively open. It's tough with Jokic. It's always going to be tough with him there for the next, you know, maybe one year if he retires to do horse stuff, or maybe ten years if he just wants to dominate mm-hmm. for another decade. Um, I, I, You know, they have lots of chips. If OG and Anobi can go and get him, obviously that's the name, right? Like, if you yeah, can get him for two firsts. Not Siakam. Uh, I don't see Siakam. In o- no, I don't think that works with OKC. Next to Chet doesn't really make a ton of sense to me, but who knows? We'll see. Uh, Kevin Durant, I want to just briefly talk about him. Sure. He's very quietly maybe having the best season of his life. He's 31, six, six assists, six boards, 52% from the field, uh, 48 from three, 88 from the line. Unbelievable. He's just like 25 points and I think 20 straight games now. Watch some Kevin Durant. He's really picked up the load. He's playing defense. Sometimes he's their primary defender. I don't know why people aren't talking about him. Yeah, I don't know why either. It seems, well, obviously too much focus on LeBron James and the Lakers. But on that same vein, like Joel Embiid has more points than minutes. And people That's are talk- only happened once in history. That was Will Chamberlain. Yeah, people are talking about Embiid, I feel like. Embiid is just like every night it's like, oh, 38 points in 28 minutes, right? Like it's absurd. But Kevin Durant, what he's doing, uh, I just I, people got almost no help, right? Beal has played about eleven minutes. Booker's been decent, but he's missed a lot of time too. Uh, Booker's been awesome. Booker's been really, Booker's really been good, good too, but again, he's missed more he's missed time. A lot of time. Booker's been playing point guard. He's getting twelve assists a game, uh, and then Beal just got hurt again. I just I don't know. Kevin Durant's a top twenty player in NBA history. Agreed. And regardless if you hate him because he jumped ship a couple times, I don't like the way he handled some of that stuff. People got to talk about this because because he is phenomenal right now, and he's not supposed to be. That's actually a good show topic that we should do. Um, top 15 NBA players of all time. Because now there's some movement, right? Like, where does Steph Curry end up on there? Well, we, we did that. You probably yeah, forgot. Yeah, we haven't done that for about two years. No, we did it after Steph beat the Celtics. Because that's when we were like, okay, Steph's top 10. And we both had him at 10. I think you maybe had him at 9. Okay. That was the last time we did that. The fans like this content. Okay. We need a good NBA fan on there to be a third. Okay. Uh, Orlando Magic, Indiana Pacers, two teams you should watch. They're, I have futures on both of them. I'm all in on both those teams. That's good basketball. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Pistons because I have no shame. Oof, boy. You talk about the Pistons because you're a Pistons fan. I uh, talk about them because I'm a basketball fan. Okay. And I have them last year. I don't know what you're going to talk about other than bad, sad, bad. No, it's not sad. Like, I've totally gotten over that bit. Uh, I'm, I'm still in the sad portion. No, I'm not. Uh, so 23. Streets at 23 in a row now. Uh... Every three games, I just do this thing where I convince myself we're going to win, and I just make it, like, a it's fundamental true. part of my day. Like, I'll just go around to telling people, hey, like, Pistons, street ends tonight. It ends tonight. And you just go around. Uh, you know, once a week or so, I do this now. And it's a good bit that I have with myself and my friends. People that see me just know, like, oh, Isaac's on one of his manic episodes. He says that the Pistons are going to win tonight. They're a 14-point underdog, but he thinks they're going to win. So it's just a nice bit that Against I Against the Indiana, that was actually a good bet because they had just come off the... They lost by 20. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, do we want to talk about your guy Giannis going nuts or no? Oh, yeah. Talk I like that. Go ahead. So I love Giannis. Isaac uh, gave me his uh, his biography a couple of years ago. So, well, you know, he's somebody who you like to cheer for. And so... I always liked him after reading the book. I liked him even more. But there was a bit of gamesmanship with the Indian Pacers. Some dude who scored his first bucket. Oscar Shibway. Do you remember him? He was the center of Kentucky. He was just a tank. Oh, yeah. I like him. That's who it is. I didn't know that. Yeah. So they went to get that ball, somebody from the Indian Pacers team. And Giannis scored 64 points, which is a Bucks record, which is something. And they took him the ball, and he went bananas. Like... Was there any more inside information that you were able to find out as to why he went so bananas? I don't know why he went so nuts. I just jokingly said roid rage. It's uh, like Isaiah Stewart against LeBron a couple years ago. It was ago. very similar. Just running through dudes. Uh, it was sad to see because Giannis is our guy. And I don't really get w- why he went nuts. But the other night, I don't know if you saw this, good PR. When they were beating Detroit by 30, he just got all of his kids on the bench so everyone could look at how nice he is again, which I thought was which a good... Which kids? Oh, his Giannis kids. Giannis' kids okay. on the bench. 
which is nice that the Pistons have a nice daycare. So whenever you play it's the true. Pistons, yeah, yeah, excellent daycare. Child care is taken care of. Yeah, get them some Coney dogs, good entertainment. Maybe down and take them down to Campus Marshes. It's a good idea. I have one more thing to talk about. Uh, so urinal etiquette is something we've discussed. Pardon me? Urinal etiquette. Urinal etiquette. Yeah, it's important. Right, like positioning and allowing others oh, yeah, to yeah. like every other. If, yeah, if Isaac available. learned it with Joey Posey about. 12 years ago. Yeah, like, urinal etiquette is a thing for it's dudes. A, it's a big thing. Where it's just like, you have to be conscious of where and making sure everyone has space and every other, if possible, whatever. Uh, desk etiquette is something that's more gender universal. That's also something I've experienced during exam time. Desk etiquette. For, for example, example, if I'm in a massive, uh, like, study room area, and there's no one in there and it's just me, and there's 15 desks, don't go on the one next to me. Go on maybe one of the other 14 desks. Recently experienced that, and although I had my pods and I was locked in, it Did was you really. Punch him in the neck? No, it was just like, a, like, what are we doing here? What, what are we doing here? We got to be better than that. So I just wanted to get that out there. Desk etiquette. Let's all be better. I miss the troughs from Tiger Stadium. I just got to say that. If you know, you know. Coach Rob for sure knows. Okay. Uh, let's talk about. We just, oh, okay. Travis, want to go first, right? Travis. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, like, I don't have a lot of experience and knowledge when it comes to hip hop artists. I've learned a lot in the last couple of months. One, because these guys have pressured me to learn some stuff. And they're not like the Beatles, but they're close. They're like the Rolling Stones. Who's they? they? Are, who's they? The big hip hop artists like okay. Drake, Travis Scott. Who else? Name some J. more. J. Cole. Ooh. Name some more. Um, LL Cool J. Nope. No, LL Cool J 23 years ago. Okay. Who uh, else? Name anyway. some more. No, I'm good. I, I named a bunch. You're doing um, good. The. Uh, Outcast. No, that's Offset. Offset. Yeah, Offset. I was <laughs> Outcast pretty close. is a rapper too, actually. Yeah, I, see. Anyway, they're awesome. They are celebrities. They are big time. Like, I, I just, I was amazed at how much, so Travis controlled the night. Great show. You gotta show. tell the folks that you were Oh there, yeah, so uh, oh we went God. to the Travis Scott concert in Detroit last Tuesday night. Um, so it was Blake, Brandon, Isaac, and myself. Oh, not Brandon, Brayden, but that's Brayden. Fine. Oh yeah, who's Brandon? Well, Brandon, yeah, that's another Brandon. Keep going. Oh my okay. god. He's so competent. as we're getting there, there was a bit of a discussion as to the crowd, and we decided there was not going to be a ton of fifty-four-year-old white dudes at the concert, or fifty-four-year-olds in general, for yeah. that matter. And but. I don't remember what number we picked. We might have said, "Oh, forty over under." A couple people picked over. A couple people picked under. I think it was under. There was just not very many old people yeah, there. There was a really high line that Vegas set. I immediately pound, I put five units on the under there. Uh, that was a really high, that's a high number. Who cares? I mean, the people um, around us were entertained by the old guy dancing and trying to have fun and trying to sing along to some of the songs that he knew. Uh, me. Um, anyway, thanks for bringing me. It, it was a lot of fun. I'm going to go to another one. So I read a little bit. So he's from Houston. He's a pretty educated guy, and he's a good guy. Uh, but like, the talk sh- about the energy. energy. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? Like, what research did you do? What do you mean he's a good guy? Internet. No, like, other than the whole death thing at the. That's uh, not on at, him. At, no, it's not on him. It was in the yeah. mosh pit. Yeah. Uh, in Atlanta or Houston? I uh, well, I don't know. I know the tour. I don't know where. But anyway, so. it it was bad. But that's not his fault. He's got amazing energy. A great light show. The special effects were awesome. He brings fans from the crowd to go in and go up and down on that big head. It was great. Like, it was so entertaining. It, yeah, it was a really good show. Uh, Travis is my guy. You know, he's top five rapper favorites for me. Uh, he's not one, though. Can you name a few of the others in my top five? Like, who do you think? Like, if I were to say... You like J. Cole. I like Cole. If I were to say Kenny, Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar, I think, might be number one for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what about if I were to say 21 Savage? He's he's just after Travis. For me? Yeah. Okay, fair. Was that uh, accurate? Kind of. What about Drake? Below. Oh, but we still rock with Drake, though. That's, you I know it. we still rock, but he's like... He's probably six. Uh, Maybe. Depends. And like Migos. Those are, who passed, oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Migos. The Migos. That's right? right. Who are the Migos? Name them. Oh, that's been a while since... Give me... Uh, there's the, three names I'll accept. Um, one of them's no longer with us. One of them died. Uh, not Outcast. No, Offset. Offset. He's, he's still kicking. He's he just still dropped kicking. a banger album. Who's the nephew who died? Takeoff. Takeoff, that's right. So, R.P. Take. Yeah, R.P. Take. Uh, and Quavo is the leader. Oh, I don't think it would have got Quavo. Okay. Uh, so, you said you want to see another one. Drake and J. Cole, touring together. Prince and Michael Jackson. This is a huge, huge deal. You talk about a big deal. This is a big, big deal. So, where are we going to go see that? It's February reading week. 
Uh, probably Ohio or Pittsburgh. So Cleveland, Columbus, Pittsburgh, one of those three okay. spots. So do I get to bring a buddy? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I think it's got to be Urban. Yeah, if one of your buddies wants to go, yeah. you're welcome to go. As long well, as Urban valid. is the person who knows rap the most of my buddies. Okay, yeah, sure. Urban can totally rock this. That's cool. Okay. Uh, I will say, so OG hung in there at the concert. There's a few rests in between songs, but that's fair game. Like, when they play the slow one, I'm okay if you sit down for a couple minutes. I like, sit fair. down for a couple minutes. That's fair game. Yeah. Uh, is there any songs? Could you name any songs? How many songs can you name? Any songs that stuck out? Like, the performance of this was good. Oh, not Adios. Uh, Oof. No. no, there's no song. But there's something that has words that has a name like that. I don't know. I, I, I'm not wow. great with the songs. You couldn't name me one song you saw. We were there for, like... Three hours and it was awesome. I don't remember. Give so me, much pressure. Give me one Travis song. Even like there's your favorites. Every now and then he'll text me out of the blue on like a random weekday at like three PM. Titan. That song is Meltdown. Meltdown, yeah, that was really good. You really like Goosebumps? Goosebumps. Okay, keep rolling. I'll Sicko you. mode you love. Sicko mode, that was adios. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> okay. Sicko mode I like. Uh My Eyes. You know I don't know if that oh, one plays yeah, a lot. Yeah. I know. Do you remember that one? You like that one a I lot. I did like that one. I don't know the songs as much, and I have difficulty. Like, I put them on, but my recall of the music isn't spectacular. Nope. Like, the song would be on for a little bit, and I realize, oh, wait a sec, I do know that one. Yeah, that was on the playlist. That, that happened a few times. Yeah. Uh, so, we're going to go again. The set list or the playlist? Because there's two completely different yeah. things. Yeah, I referenced the set list. The playlist is just something I sent to you to do some homework on. Cor- correct the window. Uh, so, yeah, Travis Scott was great. That's our guy. We have a shirt hanging there, and a nice... 4XL there that was on the street. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good shirt. Uh, okay, anything else on Travis? Nope. Okay, excellent work. Great performance, Travis. Glad you had a good time. Well done. Okay. Okay, let's talk about... Uh, the what's Lions. Next? Okay, cool. Okay, so... Listen, they beat New Orleans. Barely. They lost to Chicago. Badly. Right? There's been a little bit of a delay in recording just because I've been busy with work. And he's had exams. Yeah, hence the playoff but, beard. Yeah, yesterday which would have been Saturday, they stomped on the Broncos. Like, oh my gosh, Sean Payton is crying somewhere. Well, he was, they, there's a, like, he was a lot of history with Campbell and, and he was screaming at Russell. I don't know if yeah, another one of Yeah, I tried to read about out. it. Like, he didn't take enough time to give them time to review or something. Something like that. And something then, dumb. Uh, he was, Payton was asked about it after the game and he went nuts again. He's like, it's between me and Russell, nobody else. Okay, keep going. Um, so Aaron Glenn decided, his safeties are just not very good cover guys, right? There's been a lot of heat on Aaron Glenn the last five weeks because your defense is not very good. Last two years, there's been heat on him. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, they decided, okay, since my safeties are not very good, I'm just going to like do all sorts of goofy blitzes. And the goofy blitzes were actually very successful. Again, you, Russ is not the type of quarterback who you're going to sack a lot, but you have him with happy feet, and you're going to be a lot more successful. Uh, Ifatu Melon Melon Falu? Wow. So 0 for 2. Ifatu. Ifatu. I was pretty close. Melafonwu, I think. Melafonwu. Okay, that was I wasn't that far. We can just away. go iffy too. Yeah, iffy. He had a great like he had an OG game. Uh an OG game? Yeah, like uh original great. No, so you used OG wrong, but that's okay. Uh, but legacy. That's it. He had a legacy, he had a legacy game. game. He had a legacy game. Yeah, he had a legacy game. He was great. Brian Branch had some pops. Uh, it was good. Like, Pasco was pretty good. So, actually, shout out you. I wrote, did you look at my notes? No. I wrote down three names on the defense. Melfano, Branch, and Pasco. Those were the three names I wrote down. Very nice. Uh, and then, so I, the blitzing thing, I read a little bit about, I talked to a buddy a bit about. Uh, so, Trish Walker, I guess, got benched a fair bit for, for Melfano. And then, Jacobs got benched for, do you know who he got benched for? L- Lindor? Kindle Veldor. The, okay, so Lindor's some a chocolate. Reason. I'll give you that because I had to look this guy's and, name and, up. And uh, Corey something. K- v- Veldor is some practice squad guy. They just yeah, yeah. They got picked him up. Yeah, a little while Just pulled him up. Uh, and he played Dor- really Dorsey? Good. Yeah, it's one of the other dudes. Yeah. They're just trying to everybody in the secondary right now. Uh, it, you know, it worked yesterday. Listen, I had 2.5. Make- they have to get them. They have to get the quarterback out of his hand by 2.5. They just don't have the DBs to cover for longer than that. And... Even 2.5 is debatable. Nice job, uh, Lions. So, want to talk about offense now or you want to talk about defense a little bit more? Uh, we'll go defense a little bit more. I, I like the fact that people don't seem to be able to run on the lines. That's that's, that's a good W. Yeah, that's, 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 that's fact. fact. That's fact. Like, Denver had 40 rushing yards 
up until that last drive where they got a bit of bonus juice. And they're a good running team. Javante Williams they are is a, good a very team. good running Yeah, back, Williams is good. And they have a good O-line. Actually, I was a little bit afraid of Williams. We didn't get to talk about it much prior to, but poof, it was a little bit scary. I was actually in on the Lions. It, it was a five-point spread, and when I do notes prior to the game, I'm always very pessimistic, and I always have to change my notes. I even wrote down Lions over Broncos. Like, that was when I was doing my topics. That's what I wrote down. Good. I was very confident, and I usually am not. Um, what else do you have on the defense? That's it. I, I will say, I think Russ holding onto the ball and makes bad decisions makes defense and the pass rush look a little better than it is. Yeah. But that's okay. I will still take it. It's a W. They got 10 wins. So I had an exam uh, at 7 p.m. that night, and kickoff was whatever, 8, 10, or 8, 15. Mm-hmm. So I'm in the exam, and as we're walking in, I will just... So it was in a gym. So it's just a bunch of desks laid Which out in a gym? gym. CAW gym. Vibes were terrible. I don't know what the CAW... I don't know. CAW gym? I don't know. Either. See it, anybody... Hey, never fans, can they tell me what the CAW gym used to be? Okay, I don't know. All I know is we walked in this gym, and there's just desks everywhere. But I spot one of my buddies in a Lions jersey, and that's when the vibes were saved. <laughs> Some were talking about the game prior to the exam. Uh, How'd you do in the exam? I didn't get it back yet, bro. How no, do you think you it did? It was hard. It was really hard. But yeah. we're not to talk about that. You did good in exams. He did good Thanks. in exams. Thanks, bro. It was really, really hard exam. Bro. And I made friends in line because there's a big line to hand in the exams. It was just some random dude on his phone. I'm like, uh, hey, bro, can you check the Lions score? Kind of had to whisper because it, it was at the point. Like, like we were handing it in. But uh, he didn't know me. He's like, uh, sure, bro. Pulls it up. Seven nothing Lions. Nice, man. So then we just <laughs> made friends like that. Um so I, I I missed the first quarter. I caught up on tape today. Um, my golf issues. Not much happened in the first quarter. I, yeah, I guess I didn't miss much. The Lions couldn't really move the ball for the first. I missed the drives. first quarter as well. Um, for offense, I wrote down three names, and they're the three big names. Who are the three big names? Uh, boy, there's four really. I mean, they're good names. Okay, well, Laporta, three yeah. TDs. I've got to take. I've, I've got. To, we'll talk about him a little bit more. Uh, Sun God. Yep. Yeah. And Gibbs. Yeah. So, I go- mean, you could talk about Montgomery and Goff. Okay. I, I will. I have two. They're both system Maybe players. Frank Rag now, too. Rag was a tank and Panay's a tank, too. T- uh, I saw some Panay thing. Best to tackle in football by a very wide margin per football focus. Left and right. Just Last that week or period? Period in the league. Love it. Yeah. Um, he, need, he needs to get more love because he's spectacular. We'll talk about Laporta briefly. He's better than Hawkinson ever was. I'm very comfortable saying that. Yes. With all due respect. Because so, TJ's a good dude, but yeah. Let's say it's May 1st and you're creating, you're drafting tight ends. Okay. In the league, he's first. Are you talking like a fantasy? Overall. Like no, no. Building a team. Uh, Kelsey's yeah. older. Old man Travis. Kittles is too beat up. Andrews is great, but he's beat up too. Old man Mark. Yeah, you're, yeah, you are. That's Yeah, I guess if it's a complete bank. Like you've got, there's, this was a good tight end draft, right? You've got Musgrave and Meyer and they're supposed to be good too. Yeah, they're good too, but Laporte. Yeah, like, Laporta is awesome. having one of the best rookie tight end seasons ever. Maybe See, the nine best. or ten TDs already. We had three, I think, yesterday. He had three yesterday. And the first one was unbelievable. The first one was oh gosh, crazy, crazy good. Uh, we'll talk about Gibbs. I don't know what it was like watching Barry Sanders live, but he had one play where I, it felt like it was Barry Sanders. The one where he almost scored and he did the backup. Just uh, So Barry Sanders is not comparable to any other player that I've seen in the history of the NFL. But? But Gibbs is the second best Lions running back that I have ever seen. There were some guys, like I remember a little bit of Billy Sims. He was a beast. He would just step on people. and He was awesome. Uh, who else was really good? I I just there was one there was a the Gibbs had one like 33, 35 yard. He run danced around everybody. Where it was like I've seen that I've seen that highlight before, and it was un, I just have to put that out. You've there. You've seen that highlight in a Lions jersey, and it was Barry. Yeah, and I understand that Barry's, and I'm not saying that Gibbs is as good as Barry. I'm not saying he's going to have as good of a career. I'm just saying there's not a lot of guys that could make that play in a Lions jersey, and Gibbs made that play. Uh, I have a little bit of a negative. Like, it shouldn't, but, like, my golf issues are still there. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going to happen with golf. So, here's, at the beginning of the season, we said, we need a home playoff game, we need a 1W. And as things look today, I think our expectations are realistic for that. But I don't believe golf is a guy who brings you to the Super Bowl. No, we're not using the S word with Jared Goff. I, I, I know, and... Here's the thing. There's so many pieces in place that are great. I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be Goff, interesting to Goff, see what happens Goff, three first-round picks, 
for Justin Herbert. Can we just can we start that or no? I'd do that. Yeah, of course we would do that. Would yeah. the Chargers, who are in absolute shambles, do that? It's I'm just putting that. They out probably there. would because they're going to be bad because they've got a completely new uh, GM and coach. Yeah, GM and coach. So that person probably has three years. Well, Herbert's been beat up a lot, so they're probably like, okay, let's cash in our chips. He's still worth a lot. Um, Golf played well. I just want to say, like, there's just if you ever look at a big lines completion or a big lines play, it's his first read. It's his first look that Ben Johnson is schemed. He had open. a couple of good second reads, but maybe, not, not maybe a, lot. a couple. It's very is there rare. Any chance that Hooker could be the guy? Highly unlikely. Uh, we were talking about a, a, a bit about that because Teddy Bridgewater is just like Hendon Hooker. Hendon Hooker. Yeah. Yep. Teddy Bridgewater is just like I just want to coach football now, which I respect. Good Brief, for Teddy. Walking with a briefcase just to look cool, and the briefcase had nothing in it. That's Jameis Winston, I think, who did that. But is it? James oh, Winston sorry. did that today. Okay. I, I will say because then he opened it and said, "What's separating us from the playoffs and greatness?" And it was an empty briefcase. He oh, said okay. nothing. That was James Winston. Uh, look, I just, I don't know. I'm rooting for Goff. He's my guy uh, as a Lions quarterback. Like he, we're going to be supporting him, but th- there are issues there. I'll just say that. That's all I got. How confident are you in a playoff victory for the Lions? Incredibly. Okay. Green Great. Bay, give me Green Bay. The Rams. Give me the give me the corpse of that LA Rams team. They're nothing right now. And they're getting I'd love beat up. And they, see, here's the thing: all these other teams, they're going to be killing themselves to get to the playoffs, and they're dinged up. Did we? Justin Jefferson like came back from an injury, then had to rush to the hospital. Did we hear what happened? There? Yeah, he got crushed. I watched the hit. He I didn't hammered. see it. Yeah, he got hammered. So is he done for the season? Or I, I Minnesota should shut him down. But if they really want to push for a wild card, give me Nick Mullins in a wild card game in my house. I'll take I, that all I day. agree. Nick Mullins is going to cry. Yeah, for real. Uh, he's like I, a science teacher or something. He's not a quarterback. That's made up. Uh, he's I a great school up. teacher. I did make that up. I, I, I'm all these teams that we can play in the wild card round. I'm incredibly and like I'm still nuts. Like I think we can take Dallas. I recognize that's crazy. I do not buy the Dallas hype. Putting that out there. I don't want to play San Francisco. I don't want to play Philly. I agree with both those. Yeah. Those teams scare me a lot. But they've each had some down stretches this year. If we play at Dallas in the divisional, like I know we're if they play at Dallas divisional game, they'll be a uh, you know. An eight-point underdog? No. You think it'll be less? Yeah. I don't know, man. Five. Well, depending on where Dallas Maybe is Maybe even four and a half. Dallas is the two seed right now. I know. Okay. If it's four and a half, then... Well, da- da- Dak, like, he has to wear a diaper in the playoffs. That, yeah. It, uh, look, I... The lines... The NFC is open. The NFC is open. Let's just keep plugging. Let's keep playing. Let's win. Okay. Okay, let's keep winning. We'll talk about Michigan now. You want to talk about Michigan? We'll talk a little bit about college football madness. So, preview Michigan-Alabama to the... All time greatest. We're starting with teams. That. Yeah, we have to start. That that's what our fans want to hear about. They don't want to hear about stomping uh, Iowa and us being there for that, or me uh, being there for that. Yeah, actually, we can hear about. We yeah. can go into the into that first. Big Ten championship. A couple ahead. days before, me and a yeah, few. Buddies. I have that in my notes, but a little later on. Okay. Well, chronological order would chronological yeah. Big Ten championships. Michigan played. Did they? Did Iowa actually bring an offense, or did they just play their defense? Both both ways. Yeah. Uh, four and a half hour car ride. Me and a few buddies hopped in the car. We're like, let's just do it. Bought tickets the morning of. Um, really, really fun time. Four and a half hour ride when you can just speculate about the college football playoff picture is is a pretty quick ride. Uh, good time in indie pregame. Made friends. Batman mask was high in the rotation there. That was being shared amongst us. Um, we watched the end of the Bama-Georgia game and that's when chaos just ensued. When it was just like, okay, what yes, does this mean? It- Blew, blew up. If I'm Florida State, I am so pissed off. That's a different conversation. We're not there yet, bro. Yeah. Um, my radicalism is let's just sit very low and stay there. One of my buddies was cool with it. Two of them were like, oh, this isn't going to work. It worked. We stood in the student section. No one said anything. We looked like students. We acted like students. We learned their chants. Uh, and we mm-hmm. watched in really good seats next to the band, which was actually a pretty cool experience the first time. Just the funny thing is bands in the States are actually kind of cool. Uh, like yeah. You're in a band in Canada. I wouldn't say you they're... probably eat a lot of paste in your basement, okay. dude. You can't say that. Yeah, I think I can. I don't think our fans eat paste, and even if they do, they're okay with that. Okay, no, they're... okay. Uh, it was a really good game. We drove back. We made good time. We got home at like five thirty the next day. Drove through the night. Made great time. Shut made a bit better thing. time than you did last year. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. We did. Uh, it was a very very. Well, you fun did time. meet the first family of law. Yeah, that's true. Mr. Shout out, Mr. Bernstein. Uh, Good job. It was a big win. They didn't look awesome, but uh, it was it was a really it was a, just a cool game, cool experience to see. Okay, now you can talk about Bama. Okay, so 
Obviously, once Bama beat Georgia, it just threw everything up in the air. And the college football, like it's such a rigged organization. The NCAA, they just do whatever they want to do. They just said, okay, we're picking the Blue Bloods. Uh, Florida State, your quarterback, sorry, he's injured. I, I know you've been great this year, and I know you're undefeated. But you get to ride the bench. And that is just a great example of college football just doing whatever they want to do. They don't follow their own rules. The word is corrupt. That's corrupt. the word you're looking yeah, for. Yeah. Corrupt or inept, because I'm not sure Both. if it's more ineptitude than corruption. When you create a system that's designed to fail, it's going to fail. It's true. And that's exactly what we saw happen. Keep yeah. Going. I don't love playing Bama, right? They're a deep, solid squad. I watched a little bit of Bama later in the year. And Jalen Milrow, when he gets time to throw, he can chuck it. So the Wolverines are going to have to come up with ways to make him uncomfortable in the pocket but then tackle him when he gets out of the pocket because he can run. He's a big dude, too. Yep. Uh, should I talk about the Florida State stuff or the Michigan stuff? Michigan Bama stuff. Go Michigan Bama over. first. Okay. Go Michigan Bama Michigan first. Bama. It's an incredibly tough draw. We'll talk about the draw. I want to talk a little bit about why we got them. Uh, everyone, I don't know if you've seen the stats. Everyone with a betting account is putting money on Bama. Like the, It's like 90% of the bets on the game are on Bama. Like It's it's pretty crazy, uh, which makes me want to fade the public and bet on Michigan. But whatever. Uh, Alabama isn't for, Michigan still favored? I haven't checked it. it. They opened as I think two and a half, and it's down to maybe one or one and a half. Okay. Um, I, it's it's a pick 'em. Uh, I'm not optimistic. I'll be honest. Uh, Alabama scares me. Nick Saban scares me. Milro scares me. You talk about his running ability. Yep. Michigan hasn't faced a scrambling quarterback all year. They faced a couple good ones, other than Tua's little brother, who actually did okay against them. Yeah, he's fine. And he's not very good. Uh, M- Milro is a great athlete. He's great at extending plays, and he has a cannon. There were some issues earlier in the year, some inaccuracy stuff, right? Like, he got benched. People forget that. He got benched. Uh, I don't know why he thought he was going to get the Heisman, but whatever. <laughs> you Stupid. think he's going to get it next year. Um, I don't care about the tradition of college football and stuff. I don't care about conferences and divisions and SEC and Big Ten. I don't well, care about any of that. They're not relevant. It does like I never grew yeah. up with that. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's football. Like I sit down and I watch the teams and play. I don't care where they're from and right. Like people were emotional about the Pac-12 at night leaving. I get that. I don't. I never have an affection to that. Uh, I will say, with that being said, Michigan Bam in the Rose Bowl is about as cool as it gets, and I recognize that. Uh, and and I'm really looking forward to it because this is a really big game uh, for the program. This is a really big game. Yeah. This is Bo Schembechler versus Bear Bryant. Yeah, I don't know the other guy, but yeah. And Bo is bad, isn't he? No, Bo's not bad. Didn't he do the bad stuff? And He did not do the bad stuff. Okay, I think one of the Michigan coaches did bad stuff and we can't talk no, about it. No, maybe that was Lloyd Carr. Lloyd Carr got drunk and did a little stupid. Okay, so tough draw, but, uh, you know, beat Bama. Beat, Hopefully if, if, Michigan travels well and rolls balls on home field. If, if they beat Bama, I'm feeling pretty comfortable with Matt. Oh, I agree. Yeah, I think that. the toughest, like, the Michigan-Bama game... Is the final? Well, that's what they're saying. Last year was when it OC, was OSU got backdoored in. Was it OSU Georgia last year? Yes. And everyone was like, "That's that's the national championship." Yeah. And we won't even talk about the other game. No, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, I have nothing else on Michigan Bama. I'm very nervous. I'm very much looking forward to it. Okay. I have nothing else either. We're gonna be on the road for at least one recording next time. We should try and do two. Uh, slow Sunday college football. We're actually recording on Sunday afternoon, if you can believe that. Uh, if you look, go onto our Instagram page, Isaac was uh, posted a pretty inappropriate picture of me napping. I almost never nap. How is it inappropriate? It's just funny. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm. I'm not done talking about college football playoff, bro. Oh, you keep going. Keep going. We talked about Michigan Bama. We didn't really talk about the Florida State stuff. Oh, I'm we sure didn't. You, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what go. I'd like to discuss. You can start. Um, so Florida State and the ACC got screwed leaving Washington and Texas. So uh, I'm not worried about either of those teams. They're both pretty decent. They both have some quarterbacks, have some guys. But honestly, it doesn't matter to me because whoever wins for Washington and Texas, they're going to get stomped on. And Florida State, sorry about your luck. Quarterback got injured, and you just got screwed. That's Uh, it. Yeah, it's unprecedented what what we saw, right? Undefeated Power 5 champ, you make the playoff. That's just kind of how the rules have worked. Uh, it's backwards logic, right? So the, the push is, the big push is, it's the four best teams, it's the four best teams, that's the goal, the four best teams, it's not the record. Okay. That's, yeah, again, not how it has that, been historically. It, and it hasn't been like historically, and I'll tell you why that's backwards. 
Ask anybody who the top four teams is, and every single person is going to say Georgia's in the top four. Yeah. It's Michigan, Georgia, Alabama, and probably Washington. You can debate Washington or Texas. One of those teams are going to be four. I, I know Oregon lost twice to Washington, but Oregon yeah, is Oregon an awesome is in team. that debate as well. Right. And Ohio State? No, they're, yeah, they're bums. I don't care about them at all. <laughs> I had, they're not even like a thought. Uh, it's backwards, right? So the four best teams argument doesn't work when you leave out the team that's been number one for two years and has been awesome this year and just, you know, lost a tough game, uh, which was essentially a home game. People really didn't talk about that. That was just a Georgia game. Uh, everyone thinks Georgia is top four. I think Oregon, a lot of people think is top four. So when you say the backwards logic of it's just about getting the best teams in, it's not actually get betting the the best teams in. I, I just no. Either way you look at it, it's screwed up. Either way, someone's gonna get screwed over. In this case, it was FSU. And then here's the whole thing: like you have an F, an SEC team in here. I talk about how I don't really care about the tradition in conferences. That means nothing to me. That means not like the agenda or the idea of having to have an SEC team. I think is stupid. That right? Like what if the, the if you just try to translate this to another sport, like take the NFL, and you're like, okay, you know. This division has been really good for like a decade, so we're just going to get one of the teams and we're just going to shoot them in just because it's a really good division. Yeah, we got to jam Seattle and even though they didn't make the playoffs. What? Like that doesn't make any sense. Or or even if, take like that aside, <laughs> if you just had a, a group of people that just decided who was in the playoffs or it's like, you know, Pittsburgh might make the playoffs, but they're terrible and no fun to Actually, watch. It's like the silly Hall of Fame stuff. I'm not sure. Sh- I guess, yeah. Like, all the Hall of Fames are just a bunch of old guys that sit around and go, I like Alan Trammell. Okay, well, the Hall of Fame means nothing. It has no stakes and doesn't mean anything to us. And that's the reference. And that's the comparable. Y- yeah, yeah, I guess so. In terms of how right. you get decided. Sure, who, who the plays. Oscars, when you just have a group of people that just decide. Exactly. Like, put them on a field and and play. Do the game does not matter. That's the FSU's argument. Yeah, pretty Do sure Oppenheimer is kicking Barbie's butt. Uh, in some categories, yes, and some no. But regardless, it's a different debate. Uh, okay. I just, it's upsetting. It's as a sports fan, it just upsets me and angers me, and it doesn't make sense, and I don't get it. Uh, like what? Like just imagine if we watch football, and at the end of the regular season, it was just like, oh, these teams are going to make it, and these teams won't, and the games didn't matter. And that's essentially what I. The Twelve team playoff will fix some of this. It will not fix all of it. This is just going to be an issue with college football. Well, it'll fix Penn State. They might actually be able to make playoffs. That's the issue with it. You get a fraudulent Penn State team that yeah. just gets their butt kicked twice, but they beat up Iowa or Purdue, uh, and then they get to go and play yeah. you know, Liberty or whoever they're going to play. Next. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. yeah. I have nothing else other okay. than college football playoff is stupid. Next year will be better. Agreed. Fans, thanks for the support and tuning in. Um, if you have any thoughts as to what you would like us to speak about, please let us know. Yeah, let us know. Okay. Merry Christmas, everybody. That's okay. That's not for a week, but not Merry for Christmas. Week? Merry Christmas. Maybe they're watching on Christmas Day, sitting around the fire, watching the truth of Talon Isaac. Okay. See you.